everyone, Gorazu here, and we're back with something a little bit new to my channel rather than the usual showdown live. This time, I'll be going over my replays from the week 2 losers bracket round of the SVOU spring seasonal for this year. And I know what you're thinking, yeah, your girl kind of lost week 1 and I'm not proud of the games, but this time I got some crazy games that I would like to show off today. My opponent for this week was Fiend. I don't know his skill level or how strong of a gen 9 OU player he is in general, but he got that crazy avatar with the global voice, so I figured I'm up against someone who at least definitely has more tournament experience than I do in Smogon, which is something. Either way, he played each game very well, and I was up against someone who was both tough and brought some underrated heat sets of his own, which I was a big fan of. So without further ado, let's go over game one. For game one, I brought the Teal Mask Ogre Pond team I used in my video with it a week or two ago. It's really solid despite not having a ghost switch in. And I enjoyed it in this matchup where he brought Manaphy, although I was scared of Sticky Web going up and getting swept by either Zamazenta or Roaring Moon. I figured there's no form of hazard control on my team anyway, so I lead off with my Deoxys here as he leads Manaphy. I figure I need to keep the Sash intact for setting up my hazards later and switch out into my Ogre Pawn on the Tail Glow, which is amazing because he didn't even go for an attack here. And I outspeed this naturally, so this forces him to switch back to Zubombi which I get chip on with the Ivy Cudgel. Figuring he's gonna get his hazards up, I switch back to my Deoxys, and I do the same with Rocks. So he does go for his Stun Spore here, which is a little interesting because I only have Psycho Boost on the set as my sole attacking move, and then he too it KOs with Moon Blast. Uh, thankfully, I don't get fully parried, and I get up a spike as well, which is really gonna pay off. We still have Goldengo for the Mortal Spin Block versus Glamora, which is just fantastic but yeah I go into my D Knight this turn is really important um, after Deoxys got knocked out because um, I believe it was a roll to potentially kill Rabombi from this range after the chip I got with my Ogre Pawn earlier although in hindsight the Moonblast damage versus my Deoxys should have told me he was max HP rather than max special attack since it only did 53% which is a max roll for zero investment on the special attack so that's pretty big because if he was max special attack or um i don't think it would even do as little as 53. <laughs> so that should have been telling on its own but i didn't think to calc that turn which is why i thought oh well maybe i can just kill him with the e speed here um, obviously it did not <laughs> did not knock out the max hp rebombi here so we get a max roll of our own and do 54%, and he gets a stun spore off on this as well, which is huge but not the worst in the world because I figured D Knight's not going to sweep anyway when he has Iron Defense Zama and Gold Dango in the back. But finally, Rabambi goes down and he just goes into his Glamora as I go Gold Dango. Since I want to preserve the hazards, I go into this and he goes for his Power Herb Meteor Beam, which is honestly such a cool set. I didn't think it would do 47 to me here, but to be fair, it is the strongest Meteor Beam um, in the whole tier. And since I figured he would knock, or at least try to knock me out with the Earth Power that turn, I go right for my Terra Fairy. It might be a little premature to do this, but I really wanted to keep the hazards up on his side. Um, so I actually go for my Terra and survive the hit and go for the T-Wave to paralyze him so that Hex will knock him out the following turn, therefore preventing the potential spin. Um, so yeah, that Glamora goes down and this is great because now I know the hazards are here to stay. So after the Glamora dies, he does go into Roaring Moon and I figure I can't let this set up in my face so I stay into sack my 7% Goldango. Um, but thankfully, he just kills me with the knockoff, and knowing Primarina can eat up any hit, I go right into that. He goes for the aggro, which is not quite a 2 hit kill with leftovers, thankfully for me, since we do kill it with Draining Kiss. Let's go, that's one huge that gun. Uh, he then goes into his mana fee, which is so funny to me because I got that secret. Oh man, he's trying to set up. But nah, I got the secret Encore tag, and I lock him into the Tail Glow. So he's forced to switch out, and he goes into his own Balloon Goldango here, and I actually switched into Ogre Pond in case he decided to get greedy with Mana Fee for whatever reason and get to plus 6 anyway. Um, so I just attack what's in front of me and go right for the knockoff, which does a clean 78. But unfortunately, his Mega Green's also doing like 77 to me, which is more than what I expected. Um, to be fair, 
I'm so I'm I think I'm just so used to using the water ogre pond, which normally resists the make it rain. Um, but thankfully, he just stays in with the Goldango and lets it die to his second knockoff there. So he finally goes into one of the biggest threats, if not the biggest threat on his team, Zamazenta. I go hard into Primarina because I can't afford to let this get to plus six and just body press my whole team into oblivion. So I encore him, um, but he just goes right for the body press, which is doing 32 to 36 at plus three. And here's what really shocked me. Um, I go for Calm Mind here since Draining Kiss doesn't quite do enough. And surprise, surprise, he's Mirror Herb Zamazenta. So basically that whole Calm Mind exchange was just imp just totally pointless um, because now he's plus one spit F2. And to make matters worse, he goes for the very rare Terra Fire to resist the Draining Kiss. I was expecting Hair Steel, but I suppose Terra Fire is becoming more common to avoid getting burned. The Draining Kiss, sadly, um, it only does 10% to him, and I get knocked out by body press at this range. Um, so yeah, Primarina's pre gonna go down there. Um, and between my Ogre Pond, my Paralyzed D-Knight, and my own Zama, it's obvious who the right choice to go into is. He so yeah, I go into my own Zama Zenta, and little does he know, I have a hidden tech of my own with the Resto Chesto Zama. Oh man. So I think it's just a matter of whose Zama is healthier by the end. And I start Iron Defensing myself since he's only plus three, and I figure I can live any hit he wants to go for. So... Uh, yeah, we're, <laughs> we just got the two dogs staring at each other. Um, we're just gonna get to plus six here. Um, yeah, we just basically get to max defense and start <laughs> body pressing each other. But yeah, I go for that rest, which is really big for me. It was important to go for that before he could knock me out. Um, since obviously with Sticky Web, I am gonna be slower than his Zama. And... Yeah, this is really good because mine has more health and now he's just, just going to die to body press here. Um, so despite being the slower one, um, I'm able to knock his out, which is really nice. And with his last mon being Manaphy, Ogre Pawn um, assuredly wins this game. So he just knocks me out with the alluring voice there, which is pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, he is definitely going to die to this Ivy Cudgel, so I just go into my Ogre Pawn. And yeah, that's uh, gonna win me the game. So I'm really glad I ended off uh, game one with Ogre Pond. Um, Teal Mask Ogre Pond out of that. So yeah, let's move on to the next one. For game two, I brought my priority spam that I used in my Road to Rookie, Road to Insanity, Road to Top, whatever, whatever you want to call that series that I low-key abandoned. <laughs> but anyway, we both, um, yeah, we're both just gonna lead off with Orlando here. He brought a pretty standard team with um, Hisuian Samurott, Hazard Stack, and unfortunately turn 1, his Lando wins the speed tie here and gets the taunt off before mine, which is funny because I am jolly max speed, and usually they only invest their Lando to like 303 speed or something like that, but sadly I'm also using Sash Lando, meaning I can't do any rocky helmet shenanigans. He gets up his rocks, and um, I was forced to U-turn out there. Well, not really forced. It was kind of a little dumb in hindsight since I took Rocky Chip here. But I just go out to my Greninja to scare him out. Interestingly enough, he, do he, he goes into his Samurott here and he takes 43 from Life Orb Hydro. And he is running that red card, which you don't see often at all, curiously enough. Which brings me out into my Scizor. Honestly, it could have brought me out into something worse. I'm fine with this and I kill him with a U-turn, but he does get a spike here and that ceaseless edge did 52. Oh my goodness. Unfortunately, my scissors down to 36 when he has both rocks and a spike on my side. But the matchup here looked really difficult as is since now I'm really banking on Iron Moth to do funny things in the late game with everything else being weakened on my team. So after... Ah, uh, let me go back. So after U-turning, um, I just go into my Raging Bolt. I think my thought process when I was playing this was um, because I wanted to prevent the Pre-Marina, his own Bolt, and Roaring Moon from coming back. But he does just go into his Lando, which I do have a Lando of my own for, and I go right back into that. So he U-turns out here into his Goldango. 
which is interesting. I figured he must be Scarfed, and yeah, it was revealed to be Scarfed as he kills my Lando with the Make It Rain, which is honestly bad since I needed it to switch into his own Lando, intimidate his Roaring Moon, and definitely needed it for getting a Brox, which would have helped me a lot. So I figure out I need to scare him with Iron Moth, which outspeeds after the booster, and honestly, maybe I should have just went Greninja here since he was minus one, and Greninja would have been, um, let's see would have been at around maybe 70% after Hazard's Chip, but maybe I was just too afraid of the Pre-Marina. So I go for the Fiery Dance there. Unfortunately, I did not get the special attack boost, which means I can't kill him with another one, and he's gonna kill me instead here. <laughs> so this game already looks really, like, unwinnable to me, and maybe I was just too excited for the team I plan on bringing Game 3, but I tried to play until the end regardless. I go Greninja on his 3% Lando to maybe get a Battle Bond boost, but he goes into his full health pre-marina to eat up any hit. Um, and since I have Grass Knot, that's only gonna do 40 to 47, but we get the 45 roll and it's just gonna drop to Moonblast here, so... Yeah, this game's looking really bleak for you, girl, but to finish off the pre-marina, I just go into my Valiant and go for the close combat since I'm SD with Ice Punch, and I figure between Knock, Ice Punch, and CC, CC's definitely the strongest move here, and thankfully that drops. And of course, he's gonna go into his Raging Bolt to Revenge Kill Me, because Thunderclap will kill me no matter what, even if I didn't drop my Spideff there, because Valiant is just that frail on the Spideff side. So I low-key forgot this Raging Bolt on my team was Specs with only Draco as its dragon move and I'm forced to go for that in order to kill Bolt. So now I feel silly going for it on the 3% Lando sack, but it is what it is. He goes back into, um, yeah, his Scarf Gold Dango and knocks me out with the Shadow Ball. So goodbye Raging Bolt. From here on out, it just looks very much like a loss. Um, priority from Scissors not enough to kill his remaining three, and Valiant can't do much when Bolt exists. So I go for a last ditch Terra Dark to go for the knock and kill his Goldango, even though it doesn't matter too much. Um, even if I did survive the Shadow Ball, he's gonna go into Roaring Moon and Revenge Kill, and it's basically over. Um, so yeah, I let him kill me with the Acro there, but I think I forfeit now. Yeah. So yeah, on to the next one. Now, for game 3, this is where things get really interesting. I was joking with my friends after finishing my Mono Future Shutdown Live that I enjoyed the team so much that I would bring it to game 3 of my OU seasonal matches, since I did surprisingly well with it for the latter achievement challenge. Despite not testing it at all beforehand, only losing one game out of a handful, which made me so hyped. For context, I had recorded the shutdown live an hour or so before my set started, so you already know I was still riding off the high I got from the shutdown live. But anyway, he brought a very interesting walking wake team, no sun, but a lot of bulky mons on his team like Clef, Tinglu, Gloking, another Zama, which is a huge threat to my team. Um, oh, the foreshadowing is so hilarious here. You can't see the chat, but maybe I'll edit it in the video. Um, I'm just so happy my opponent liked my team here, but oh man, he said it just loses to Walking Wake in the Sun. And well, I didn't reply because I'm one of those people who really needs to focus. But uh, yeah, I'm going to lead off with my treads here, which is... <laughs> arguably a risky lead against the walking wake my logic for staying in is because i gotta try to get up the terrain somehow right um, and nothing wants to switch in here no water switches nothing just balls to the wall mono future offense and funny funny enough it lived a hydra steam it <laughs> survived at four percent so we're able to get up the terrain which cracked me up I totally thought Treads would drop here, so I get the fast rocks up, but oh man, I take advantage of the terrain being up by going into my Banded Valiant, which outspeeds his wake and terrain, and I go for a Banded CC here, sadly on the Glow King, which takes nothing, but I switch um, into the Iron Crown after that. And he's going to, yeah, he's going to double to Clef here. Honestly, I was not expecting to catch that, but it looked like a good switch on my part nonetheless. <laughs> Here though, I do double to Valiant, expecting Tinglu, 
which um, he does exactly what I predicted. You could argue I make no real progress here, but it's just funny how he went to Clef and took a whole 38 from Banded CC. Maybe he figured out my item by now, maybe he didn't, but either way it's funny, and I go back to my Iron Crown, and he takes this opportunity to get the rocks up. And yeah, that terrain's almost gone, but... Um, Tinglu ends up coming in on Specs Terrain Boost Attack on Cutter, which I spam until I die. Um, he still ate it up though, but yeah, I go for that again. But interestingly enough, he whirlwinds me out rather than going for EQ. Maybe expecting the Jugulus or just trying to get rocks chipped on something. But he brings out the Boulder, which is honestly not going to be the best in this matchup anyway. So I spam the Life Orb EQ until it dies, and he just lets me claim his Ting Lu, which is amazing. I mean, yeah, he did get up a layer of Spike, which is scary yet again. Um, since now my moth is going to take so much chip from hazards. But yeah, out comes the Zamazenta, and he just starts going for game with iron defense spam. And I go for that Zen headbutt since it's super effective and gets good chip regardless, which is why um, I go into my Valiant after this dies as well. Um, so I did some calcs, and I realized moth does 34 to 40 with Sledge Wave versus the non terrid Zama. So I'm gonna go for my banded CC here, and <laughs> all right, he's in range. He's he's at forty percent. Um, so yeah, um, the valiant dies here, but this <laughs> sequence of turns is just so funny because I did put him in range of a high roll, and yes, I do get that high roll and kill him. <laughs> Oh man, thankfully we knock it out. He just sends in his slow king, which is the one thing that can reliably take this moth on. Um, I go for sub scouting the T wave, but he just goes for shadow ball, which is very interesting. It tells me he doesn't have future sight or psy shock or anything that could actually kill me, which is funny. But since Iron Moth has decent spadef bulk, I decide to stay in and fiery dance and get a lucky boost here. Plus one special attack Terra Ground uh, with Terra Blast does 85 to 100 if I was calculating correctly versus the Glow King if he doesn't Terra. So I was getting excited around this part of the game. Uh, but this, this Iron Moth is struggling on life support right now. 13% um, from another Shadow Ball. But man, oh man, does this mod put in the finest of work. I go for that Terra Ground and get a crit that didn't matter. <laughs> But uh, my opponent thought it did for a second. I reminded him to calc with plus one special attack, and he realized he accidentally put plus one attack instead, which kind of cost him that turn. But now, here is the manipulative part. He goes into his gold dango, and I realize he's been calcing obsessively just as I always do, so this turn is super important because I know he corrected the iron moth in his calc. He now has plus one special attack, and I know that he knows that plus one fiery dance does not kill defensive gold if he goes for the Terra Fairy, which is the Terra type gold has 90% of the time, let's be real, <laughs> when it's the bulky one. I suppose he could have been the elusive Terra Water, but I had to play to my outs here. Um, so plus one fiery dance, it would have done 70 to 83 to Terra Fairy Goldango. Um... So I'm not sure if you would consider this a 50-50. He could have just stayed in pr predicting me to overpredict, but that would be crazy. Um, because plus one, obviously Fiery Dance kills this if it doesn't Terra. And Sludge Wave will if he Terra's. So I was thinking long and hard about this turn 20 coming up. I placed myself in his shoes and figured if I wanted to win the game against this plus one speed boosted Iron Moth... Um, I would go for the Terra Fairy to survive this. So yeah, I do predict it correctly, and I go for the Sludge Wave to kill him. <laughs> because I'm the greatest player of all time! <laughs> My opponent drops the early GG in the chat. Um, but I really don't like to say GG until the game is over. I go for the plus one Sludge Wave. Expecting it to kill the wake, but it actually does not kill it. It only does 85, which probably stings because he could have just gone into this to take a hit and revenge kill me all along. But hey, I'm not complaining. Um, Iron Moth dies here, but thankfully with wake and clef being his last two, um, I just go into my Iron Crown and clean up from here. <laughs> I click that Tachyon Cutter to take out wake. 
he is going for the hurricane confusion. Um, but yeah, I just need one tachyon cutter to kill him there. And he's revealed to not be choice locked since he switched up moves there. Um, but yeah, the clef dies as well, and that's GG. And oh man, I just realized Iron Dragulus didn't even come out in this match. <laughs> Uh, but oh man, it's so funny. It's only after I saved the replay that I saw he said in the chat, yeah, I should have teared the Slow King, which I totally agree with. Um, but yeah, after these games, I was just so hyped and proud of myself. So I hope I made you all proud as well. <laughs> I know I could have played these better, but I'm quite pleased with how it turned out. So if you enjoy this type of tournament coverage or replay analysis, then let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to like the video as well. And yeah, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!